Hello everybody, so I welcome you all to the first lecture of adiabatic two phase flow and flow boiling in micro channels. Now, what I feel is assuming that many of you will be newcomers to the course. So, before I go into the details of the micro channels, I would first like to give you a brief introduction regarding multi phase flow. Once we understand what is multi phase flow, then we will try to see the intricate details or the uniqueness of multi phase flow or more specifically two phase flow in micro channels. Now, in order to define multi phase flow, just the presence of two phases does not necessarily imply that it is multi phase flow. For example, flow through packed bed is not multi phase flow, but on the contrary flow th in a fluidized bed is multi phase flow. So, therefore, the way we define multi phase flow is if you can see here, it is the simultaneous flow of two or more phases where the interface between the phases is influenced by their relative motion. Right. This particular uh, this particular phrase regarding the interface is something very very important because that differentiates single phase and multi phase flows. Now, as we all know that we can have different types of uh, even if we take the simplest type of multi phase flows also we can have different types we can have gas liquid we can have liquid solid and we and we can also have gas solid type of flows we can also have liquid liquid types of two phase flows as well. <coughs> So, just in uh, continuation to what I was saying, when we have a gas liquid flows, then the entire range is multi phase starting from a large amount of liquid very less amount of gas to a large amount of a gas and very less amount of liquid. But on the other hand, when we are dealing with gas solid and liquid solid flows, we find that when the solid loading is quite high such that the interface becomes fixed, it is single phase while when the solid loading is comparatively low the gas or the liquid loadings are high then under that condition we have two phase flows. Well, now the multi phase flow it has got a large number of applications uh, the I have just jotted down the applications here in power system in heat exchangers evaporators condensers wherever we have phase change or rather wherever we have one at least one phase which is changing its phase we have it in a large number of process systems. In fact, if, if you look at this particular slide, you will realize that when we are dealing with chemical processes, then in that we usually deal with processes with chemical reaction and without chemical reaction. Now, in all the processes which you have already studied in your mass transfer as well as in your kinetic subject, we find that usually the steps involved are we mix the two phases, maintain one particular phase either in the form of a droplet or bubble or film something of that sort such that the interfacial area is quite high and the maximum amount of transport be it heat be it mass or the maximum amount of reaction can take place. And then finally, we separate the phases and there are also some other additional or some other subsidiary phases uh, 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 rather steps also involved. But in all these things we find that there are two phases involved and for obvious reasons we, we would always prefer a flow as compared to a batch system. So, therefore, it is very evident that for most of the situations we come across multi phase flows. In fact, there are very few single phase flow applications in nature as well as in industries. Now, the thing which I was telling about the interface, well that the interface is influenced by the relative motion. This creates the uniqueness of multi phase flows. Due to this what happens if you are dealing with a single phase flow, maybe say water flowing through a pipe, the flow can be either laminar or it can be turbulent. But when you are dealing with two phase flows, we find that the two phases they can distribute in a wide variety of ways. For example, suppose we look at the distribution say gas liquid flow through a vertical pipe. We find at one extreme what do we have if there is moderate or high liquid velocity and low gas velocity gas is distributed as bubbles in the continuous liquid phase. We go to the other extreme there is a large amount of gas less amount of liquid. Here what do we have? By intuition you it might appear to you that well 
for a large liquid small amount of gas the gas was dispersed as bubbles in the liquid phase so when we go for a large gas low liquid it might be obvious that the liquid will be dispersed as droplets in the gas phase but this does not happen why because it is the natural tendency of the liquid phase to wet the pipe wall <coughs> so therefore we find that there are a variety of distribution it is true and the distribution it depends upon a large number of factors for example, it depends on whether the pipe it is vertical, horizontal, inclined. It also depends upon whether the flow in the vertical pipe is an up flow or down flow. And just like single phase flows, definitely the distributions they depend upon the phase flow rates and the physical properties of the two phases. In single phase flow, suppose I would like to find out the frictional pressure drop it remains unchanged whether the single phase is flowing in an upward direction or in a downward direction in the pipe. It does not depend the frictional component does not depend if the pipe is inclined or horizontal or vertical. But in this case we are going to find that all these input parameters they matter. So, therefore, it comes to one's mind that definitely the two phases can be can distribute themselves in no matter whatever ways and we have no means of predicting it. But fortunately there are certain things which also govern the distribution of the two phases. For example, if it is a gas liquid flow or a vapor liquid flow, the channel wall will always remain wetted with the liquid phase unless the channel is heated for adiabatic flow condition we will always have that wall wetted by the liquid phase. Either if it is heated or if the wall is highly hydrophobic then of course, it is different otherwise the channel wall will be wetted with the liquid phase. The other thing is usually small gas bubbles or small liquid drops they tend to be spherical and as the, uh, the amount of liquid or, or rather as the amount of gas increases they take up some other different shapes. The other thing is the effect of gravity whenever we have two phases they have different densities and whenever they have different densities it is quite natural if it is a non vertical system then the lighter phase will be flowing on towards the upper portion of the conduit and the lower the heavier phase will be flowing in the lower portion of the conduit. So, accordingly I would just like to discuss the flow patterns or the typical flow patterns which we encounter in a macro system when two phases are flowing. For the beginning let us consider a gas and a liquid phase. The two the distributions are more or less similar if it is a gas and liquid or a vapor liquid flow or in other words the distribution is more or less similar for a two component two phase flow or a single component two phase flow for gas liquid systems. Just as I was discussing <coughs> initially when the liquid is in a large proportion or rather when the liquid velocity is uh, moderate more or less moderate to high and gas is in a, at a low flow rate is being introduced in it. Quite naturally the gas will be flowing as bubbles because the liquid will have to wet the pipe wall and the liquid is in a larger proportion. So, naturally it tends to shear the gas phase due to the high liquid inertia the gas phase tends to get sheared. The amount of shearing will depend upon the amount of or rather the amount of liquid inertia that is present and these bubbles when they are very small naturally they tend to take a spherical shape. So, therefore, if we observe what we find is that initially we find that spherical bubbles start flowing in the liquid phase and as we keep on increasing the gas velocity naturally the bubbles they tend to elongate they do not remain spherical anymore they tend to take some 
irregular or may be some sort of cap shaped, may be some sort of an ellipsoidal shape. So, they take a large number of shapes, yet the distribution remains unaltered. There is a continuous liquid phase and a dispersed gas phase. Accordingly, no matter what the shape, size and frequency of the bubbles are, this is known as the bubbly flow pattern. Now, as we keep on increasing the gas velocity say, what happens? More and more amount of these bubbles are formed, they start getting larger, their number also increases. So, they coalesce very fast and as they start coalescing, they take up a typical shape with a hemispherical or a circular nose, it is better a circular nose and a cylindrical tail. Now, these type of bubbles, they are very typical and they are quite a frequent occurrence I should say, I should say in gas liquid flows and these are commonly known as Taylor bubbles. In fact, if you would like to empty water from any particular bottle with a narrow neck, we find during emptying the a gas bubble starts entering or a gas finger starts entering and as the gas finger starts entering, the liquid drains from the side. This is how liquid drains from any particular tube or a conduit or a bottle or whatever it is. And in all those things we find that the gas assumes a typical shape with a circular nose and a cylindrical tail. And as this particular bubble it starts increasing in size due to increased gas velocity, we find that the nose shape remains unchanged. The extra volume of air it goes to increase the tail portion of the bubble. Now, what happens as we had increased the gas velocity from the bubbly flow pattern, the bubbles they start coalescing and they start and then the bubbles start getting elongated and finally, they assume the typical axis symmetric bullet shape characterizing Taylor bubbles. Now, moment such bubbles are formed, naturally what happens? The liquid is pushed at the sides, the liquid will naturally wet the pipe wall. So, therefore, it flows along the sides in a downward motion and after flowing, when it has reached the tail of the Taylor bubble, it comes in contact with the liquid portion which is there just below the Taylor bubble. Now, moment this downward flowing jet meets the upward flowing liquid here, naturally a good amount of turbulence is created and due to this turbulence, some amount of bubbles they get sheared from the tail of the Taylor bubble and this makes the liquid slugs aerated. So, therefore, under this condition what do we find? If you, if you observe this particular slide, you will find that from in this particular situation, we find that there is a Taylor bubble, there is a liquid slug, it can be aerated or unaerated and then there is again another Taylor bubble. So, if you observe the any particular cross section of the pipe, you will find that at one point a Taylor bubble is rising, at the other point the liquid slug is rising and again at other point the Taylor bubble is rising and this goes on, this particular phenomena goes on. So, at any particular cross section if you find, you will not find the mixed or well dispersed appearance of the bubbly flow pattern 
on the contrary you will find a periodic appearance a periodic appearance with Taylor bubbles and liquid slugs following each other in quick succession and this particular phenomena this particular distribution it is known as the slug flow pattern. I am spending a little more time on this particular slug flow pattern, we will be understanding the reason for it as we proceed through our lecture. Now, again from this slug flow pattern what we do? We keep on increasing the gas velocity. So, what happens? Initially the Taylor bubbles they start becoming longer and longer and they start becoming longer as they start becoming longer they become unstable and due to the shearing action of the liquid a time comes when this particular bubbles are no longer stable and they take up some irregular shape of some irregular chunks which are randomly distributed in the liquid phase and the liquid we find that since the, the, the liquid it is wetting the pipe wall here it is coming down here and then it is meeting with the upflowing liquid there. So, with everything the liquid it exhibits or rather the whole two phase mixture it exhibits a random chaotic up and down motion. The whole flow passage it appears as a totally mixed and an extremely random and a chaotic mixture and this particular distribution is known as the churn flow pattern right. And again from this churn flow pattern if we keep on increasing the gas velocity we find that these irregular chunks they keep on increasing in size in they, they keep on their frequency increases and there is a totally chaotic random phenomena. Finally, all these gas chunks they coalesce with one another to form a continuous gas core pushing the liquid towards the wall. Okay. So, therefore, this was slug from there we obtained the churn flow pattern and finally, from the churn we are just increasing the gas velocity in this particular direction liquid velocity is constant say for example, we are just changing one parameter to understand the influence of rather gas velocity on distribution. We find that finally, we come to a situation when the gas phase forms a continuous core and the liquid forms an annular film. So, this and this particular flow pattern with a continuous gas core and an annular liquid film between the gas core and the pipe wall. This typical flow pattern is known as the annular flow pattern. And as we further increase the gas velocity, the interfacial waves start becoming more and more wavy as it starts becoming more and more wavy, it tends to pick up some amount of liquid from the film and this particular liquid it gets dispersed as liquid droplets in the continuous gas core. And further if the gas velocity or rather the liquid velocity is increased more may be at some point is reached where the liquid droplets they gradually coalesce and they form wisps sort of things where we call it a wispy annular flow, but anyhow it is an annular flow. So, now if you see 
what, what do we observe in a nutshell whatever I have described it is exhibited in this particular presentation. We find that when we had a very small amount of gas the appearance was completely mixed and we find that under that condition if you continuously look at one particular cross section you will be seeing that every time you you, ha you get the same particular dis you see the same particular distribution there is some particular liquid where some amount of gas bubbles are distributed keep on increasing the gas velocity you find that the homogeneous distribution which you are observing so long is now no more it now assumes a periodic phenomena with intermittent appearance of first a Taylor bubble then a liquid slug again a Taylor bubble and a liquid slug in this particular way it follows and this particular uh, phenomena it is very interesting I would like to say referring to my previous thing here what do we have? We have a Taylor bubble region where the Taylor bubble and the liquid film are flowing counter current to each other. Then we have a liquid slug region which may be single phase liquid or an aerated liquid slug, but the whole mixture is going up. Again we have a Taylor bubble region. So, in this Taylor bubble region it, 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 it is sort of an annular arrangement, but mind it in annular flow both the film and the gas core are flowing upwards. In this particular case the Taylor bubble is flowing upwards, the gas core is flowing downwards. Okay. So, here we have a completely periodic appearance. And again from here we keep on increasing the gas velocity we again come across another chaotic appearance, but this appearance in no way this is also a mixed appearance this is bubbly flow is also a mixed appearance, but they are distinctly different. If you can perform experiments in the lab you will find that here you can find discrete bubbles dispersed in the continuous liquid phase the continuity of the liquid phase will be more or less evident. While in this particular case you will find that it is a totally turbulent random mixture which is going up and down and therefore, you really do not understand what is continuous and what is the discontinuous phase here. Then as you go to the annular flow you get a totally different a separated flow distribution where the gas and the liquid are occupying completely different flow areas within the pipe cross section and they are interacting only at a, across a well defined interface. Now, the same pipe you take and you just make it horizontal. There are two things as I was telling firstly there is gravity what does gravity do it tends to separate the two phases. So, naturally at low velocities buoyancy will be more important as compared to inertia of the phases and therefore, due to the predominant effect of gravity you will find that the two phases they, are, they flow in separate layers the gas phase on the top the liquid phase on the bottom. You increase the velocity you find that the interface becomes more and more wavy yet the two phases are in a separated flow pattern, but this separated flow pattern is slightly different from the separated flow pattern you had encountered in the vertical case or the annular flow pattern. Okay. And apart from this as we increase the phase velocities naturally inertia also sets in due to the importance of liquid inertia there is shearing effect and we have plug flow, we have slug flow, we also have bubbly flow at the other extreme we have annular flow, but remember one thing for horizontal pipes all the flows are more or less asymmetric. The liquid on the, uh, the if the if it is bubbly flow the bubbles will be primarily concentrated on the upper region if it is annular flow the film will be thicker in the lower portion as compared to the upper portion. If it is slug flow the Taylor bubbles or the elongated plugs will be primarily concentrated towards the upper portion of the pipe. So, therefore, what we find is that mainly in this particular situation there are different flow patterns which are coming into picture and it is primarily due to the interaction between liquid inertia, li uh, your uh, viscosity 
you, uh, the surface tension and gravity or the body force. So, from a balance of these we get different particular flow patterns in this particular case and the video which has been taken in the gas dynamics lab of the mechanical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur that shows the distribution in the bubbly flow. It shows the elongated Taylor bubble and most in, and the aerated liquid slugs. The most in interesting feature is the churn and the churn annular flow patterns. If you observe these particular flow patterns, you will see the oscillating random chaotic motion which takes place in this particular situation. Now, instead of a liquid and a gas, if we just introduce another liquid here, then in that case we find that the flow patterns change continuously. We will be discussing it in our next lecture as we proceed with our introduction to multiphase flow before we go to discussing the characteristics or the uniqueness of two phase flow in microchannels.